The newest Dead by Daylight chapter has hit the shelves and it is absolutely fantastic. But a little over a week digesting all of the new content, it's time to give my honest opinion on everything and let you guys know how I feel about this chapter. Kings and Queens, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and you're doing well. I want to first off say thank you guys for all the support you guys have been giving recently on the channel. I really do appreciate it. We're trying to get 150,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you guys are helping us achieve that goal. So thank you so much. And quickly before we continue this video, I want to let you guys know that we are live on Twitch right now. Twitch.tv slash the king. I hope we see you guys there. We're also multi-streaming on noise. Hopefully we see you guys there as well. We've been doing 12 hour streams every single day. Today's day four of a 12 hour stream. And Wednesday, we are going to be doing a massive bit a which huge, huge giveaways. So if you want to win this new DLC and everything like that, maybe some merch, maybe some gift cards, head on over to twitch.tv on Wednesday. But we're live now. Hopefully we'll see you there as well. Okay, let's continue with the video. Let's begin. This chapter has been absolutely phenomenal from the beginning all the way to the end. I'm going to start off with saying that there was no major, major leaks. Now, obviously, in the community, if you were paying attention, there was someone going around that almost accurately predicted everything that pretty much happened. However, this wasn't blown out of proportion. You know, people talked about it a lot, but it wasn't something that caught on to everybody's radar, similar to previous leaks, which was really, really good. It still allowed us to build up the hype for this chapter and to still kind of guess and even question if these leaks were real or if they were fake, which overall was absolutely fantastic in my opinion. It's been such a long time since we got a chapter that we just kind of speculated, we guessed, we tried to connect the dots and put the clues together, and we eventually found something out that we didn't previously know, making this one of the best buildups to a chapter in a very, very long time. To add on to that amazing buildup, We've had some teasers that were top notch. Now, I know they tried doing teasers like this previously. The artist kind of had something like this going on, but it didn't necessarily work out as good as some as the other teasers. It just, it fell short. This one, on the other hand, ah, oh, chef's kiss. Everything about it was good. At every single turn, we were questioning what's going on. And even when the killer was revealed in the final one, it built up the hype even more. The overall reaction of the community was this is one of the most anticipated and cool things to come into the game for a very, very long time. And then finally, the PTB was here, everybody was excited, and we jumped straight into it. Let's talk about the survivor. We got Sable. She looks fantastic. I can't wait to see all the different cosmetics that she's going to have. I mean, aesthetically, very pleasing. She is a really, really cool character. Not to mention... Her lore is pretty cool too, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to the lore. They went with more of like this edgy kind of person that's not necessarily into the things that everybody else is into, which is super awesome. I love the route that they decided to take. Comparing this, in my opinion, to something like the Skull Merchant's lore, this is just way better. It, it suits the character, it works out so much better. They've done a really good job, and they definitely leveled up prior uh, to what they're doing now. Not to mention, as well, the lore is open to interpretation. I know a lot of people are talking about maybe she has a thing with Michaela. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe they're just friends. Whatever the case may be. The point being, it shows that you can relate to her as a character in any which way possible. It's not necessarily sanctioned off just to one side or the other side, whatever the case may be. You can use this as your own representation, which is really cool in that regards. And behavior always does a really good job when it comes down to rep in the game. Perks wise, her perks are okay. You know, they're not necessarily the best. They're not the worst. I think they're pretty good. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with her perks. I think it's pretty decent, pretty decent. I can't really complain about it. I think it's really, really nice and it has good synergy with other perks as well. So that is pretty cool. Moving on forward, let's talk about the new killer, the unknown looks wise. I'm not going to lie, a little bit questionable. I wasn't necessarily expecting it to look the way it does, but overall, it's it's okay. It's okay. Some people might find it uncanny and eerie and, you know, really weird. Some people might look at it and laugh. Either way, it really does depend on your take on horror. For me, I'm a person that looks at it and I'm kind of like, okay, it's, it's all right. It's not necessarily the scariest thing out there. And from watching the teasers itself, I may have expected something else. But prior, I know I built it up in my head with Skull Merchant that this chapter was going to be a certain way. 
So this time I came in with little to no expectations whatsoever. I said that I'm not even going to think about anything and build it up in my head that this killer maybe mimic voices or things like that or will look a certain way because I know I've been disappointed before. So my expectations were pretty low. So when I did see this killer, they were, you know, blown away. I was like, okay, this is pretty cool, but also kind of weird. Overall, though, for the looks, it's all right. It's all right. The Mori, in my opinion, was also something that was just all right. I expected a little bit more from this killer, something more gruesome, especially after seeing the teaser. In my opinion, it feels a little similar to Wesker's with the tentacles coming out, except obviously this time it disintegrates, but still a decent Mori nonetheless. It's not the worst. It's not the best. Let's talk about the power. This is one of the most unique and fun powers that we've seen in a very long time in Dead by Daylight. At first glance, I thought that this was a pretty awful power. I thought this was just like Singularity Huntress mixed together and why would you ever play this killer over Huntress? And then as I started to play and realize you can hit on walls, you can go through objects from the ceiling, you can then hit multiple survivors. I started to realize that this power, I started to realize that this power is very, very unique, very fun and pretty damn good. Uh, I started to get 4Ks every single game, and I quickly realized that this killer is actually not that bad whatsoever. So after playing for a very long time, I started to fall in love with the power, and I've seen so many other content creators and community members saying how much they love the power as well. They've done a really, really good job with it, and I think once it hits live servers, people are going to fall in love with it as well. The perks are pretty good too. I mean... If you take a look at Undone, I think it's one of the best perks in a very long time in Dead by Daylight. Combine that with Pop Goes the Weasel, Merciless Storm, and Overcharge, and you have yourself a deadly build. Collect those tokens, hit those generators, and you will get massive regression. And in today's day and age with Dead by Daylight, that pays dividends. Just being able to stop those generators from going. Really cool perks. The other two, they have good synergy and they're obviously going to be changed around. I think one of the survivor perks specifically is going to be changed around. So still open to interpretation and how you feel about the perks, but overall, they're not that bad. But yeah, overall, the killer is pretty damn good. If I have to rate it out of 10 specifically, I'd give it a 7 out of 10 when it comes down to the killer. Let's talk about the map. The map is beautiful. I absolutely love the map. I'm so happy they went back and used the Withered Isle section for the first time in a very long time. It just goes to show you that they talked about this since Garden of Joy was released and said more maps are going to come. So they were that far in advance, or at least they had this planned roughly that they're going to make a chapter around this at some point in time. And it's amazing. I mean, aesthetically, it is beautiful. I love the blend of the indoor outdoor. And it doesn't necessarily feel like any of the other maps, but somehow still feels very similar and familiar to the other maps, if that makes sense. It feels like it just belongs in Dead by Daylight. It even has new tiles, which are absolutely amazing. I mean, no joke, these tiles are super cool, and it's the first iteration of new tiles in a long time that I'm like, whoa, this is actually really nice. This reminisces me of old Dead by Daylight, and... I can't complain about it. Everything about the map is super cool. I love the blend of the arcade machines and the movie cinema. Uh, it all works out very, very well in my opinion. And honestly, I couldn't have been more happy with a map. There's been a lot of maps like the Borgo that I'm just looking at and I'm like, uh, this really is not it. But this map they've knocked out of the park. Even the small details and the small Easter eggs go such a long way. We can see uh, if you watched my previous video, there's little names and signatures of Michaela and Sable. The arcade machines make noises. You can see the Moonstone Cafe. They really paid attention to the details in this map, which, in my opinion, really shows how passionate they are. I mean, and that doesn't even stop. You know, we have an amazing map. That doesn't stop to talk about the amazing music that we have, the amazing animations that we have. I mean, they've done such a good job. This feels like an anniversary chapter, kind of. DLC essentially and we're getting it nowhere near the anniversary which is really cool I gotta give props to them when they've done it right and they have done it right this time I'm sure you guys probably feel the same way as that's the opinions I've been seeing all over social media if I have to give an overall rating for this chapter it's gonna be a high 8 out of 10 I mean I have personally never rated a chapter almost this high especially some of their original content I'm sure as a developer, this feels amazing, knowing that something you have created rather than Chucky or Alien, which are big licenses, and you're just trying to show in a good light and do justice to, but something you have personally created, 
is so well received by the community and you can definitely tell that they were itching to put this one out after putting so many licensed content out they're finally here to show what they've created and how they've improved especially after bringing in some big licenses and overall it is fantastic um but yeah, that's my personal rating on this chapter. I just want to come out here, give you guys my opinions on it. I know a lot of people are going to ask me as well, where do I rank this killer on a tier list? And I have to give it a B or a B plus. I think the killer to right hands will be very devastating. And as time goes on and people really figure out how to play this character, you're going to see some insane shots and people are going to do some really, really good damage. But yeah, that's how I feel about this chapter. I hope you guys did enjoy. Again, as I said, we will be live on stream right now. You can come on over to Noise or Twitch. Make sure you guys are heading over. The links will be down in the description. Thank you guys again for all the love and support. As always, I'm the king. I tip my crown to you guys. And we'll see you in the fog.